queen hello hello how are you i am well how you doing i'm blessed i can't complain before i get started i've been seeing you dominate i've been seeing you kill it for years and i'm so blessed to have this opportunity to talk to you because i when i say for years i'm like oh she she killing it thank you oh, like, i appreciate that killing it. you know and so i just want to say i'm proud of you first off um, cause I was watching from a distance, but we here and now we in tune for life. We, we yes. lifers now. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm excited uh, to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Oh no. Thank you for accepting it. That, that's the blessing. Um, so tell them a little bit about yourself and we can get in. Yes. So hello everybody. If we are not connected, hopefully after tonight we can stay connected. I am Coriel. Serial entrepreneur, two-time author, and educator that turned my $32,000 teaching salary into a million-dollar digital brand. I'm the founder of Work University, which is the first Black woman-owned online trade school where I help other Black women all around the world, um, all around the world, turn their existing skills into new streams of income so that we can stop that paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck struggle. I'm also the host of the Girl Stop Playing podcast where I get to encourage you all each and every week to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. So I'm excited anytime I have the opportunity to be here. My whole mission is helping black women specifically realize that you could make the money and you could get the honey. You don't have to choose. You can have it all. You just got to be willing to work for it. Yo, first of all, that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I said, put some respect on my name. You heard extra respect. <laughs> So, so when you was a teacher and you decided to transfer to online, like, like break that down in your mind frame at that time, because sometimes when people are in a, in a certain place and they got this comfortable uh, uh, sit, uh, job and they stuck there, they don't want to transfer to being an entrepreneur full time. So what was your mindset right at that point before you took that leap? So it definitely was not a smooth transition. Let me just start by saying that I didn't have one of those stories where, you know, y'all see on Instagram where people talk about they quit their job. They had this leap of faith that all of that. I didn't have that. So I was not living a comfortable life as a teacher. I was living a broke life as a teacher. OK, making that thirty two thousand dollars a year. Not only was I making thirty two um, K a year, I was getting paid one time per month. And for anybody who's ever had that, you know, been in that situation where you have to budget one paycheck for 30 days, that's a special type of struggle. So I definitely was not living a comfortable life. So the decision to step away from the classroom wasn't a hard one, but it actually came after I was engaged to be married, um, broke off that engagement. And y'all, if I could be honest, I was really just trying to like start a new life. I was trying to start over. So I actually gave up my teaching job here um, in Atlanta and I got a job. I took a contract to teach in Abu Dhabi. So I was literally just like gonna leave town, run away from all of my problems. And literally like two weeks before I was supposed to um, leave and go to Abu Dhabi, I realized I was going for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And even though I could run, I could not hide. And either way, um, I was gonna have to deal with those problems, you know, sooner or later, one way or the other. So I actually, came out of the classroom and went to bartending school, y'all. So from, from elementary school to bartending school, and the very first job that I had after um, I stopped teaching third grade was actually as a bartender in the clubs here in Atlanta. And within the first month, I was making more money bartending. Actually, I was waitressing before I could get a bartending job because bartending jobs are hard to come by. So I had to get my foot in the door with a waitressing job. But within the first um, month, waitressing, four days a week, part-time, I was making more than I was full-time with a master's degree as a um, as an elementary school teacher. So it wasn't a, um, a hard decision to make, but it, it definitely wasn't like this leap of faith where I just, you know, one day decided entrepreneurship is for me. I kind of feel yeah. like I was kind of forced into entrepreneurship because the first... Um, Real business, and I say real business because I dibbled and dabbled and side hustled since I was 16. But the first real business that I started was a nonprofit. It was called the Single Wives Club, and it was 
um, an organization that I started after I got out of that abusive relationship, realized that I, you know, wasn't ready to be married, but still wanted mm -hmm. to be married, just it wasn't prepared. So the Single Wives Club was my opportunity to educate myself and also educate other single women. And working that um, waitressing job, which eventually turned into a bartending job, really gave me like the freedom and the time and the funds um, to be able to start that business. So I know I said a whole lot, but my mindset at the time was running away from my problems and God had to redirect me and get me together. Oh, I, lo I, I love transparency. And because sometimes people be thinking when they see people doing great online, they be like, oh, it was just a high skip skippity for them. And it's not going to be the same for me. Everybody has a story and everybody have peaks and valleys. You know, there's yes. some people just want to show you the end result, but some people show you the whole transformation. That's so irresponsible. That that. That's irresponsible yeah. to me. And, but you're right. A lot of people do do that. And then when you start going through something, you feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Well, why can't I do it? And y'all, listen, we all struggle. We all start from somewhere. And a lot of us start and don't have any clue how we're going to finish. We just start and keep on going and, and figure it out. Mm, facts and that's facts so, and i'm telling people like yo take baby steps you don't have to fly right now all you gotta do is crawl walk then you run like take baby steps allow yourself to be human allow yourself to make mistakes yeah. you know we we're not perfect we're not superheroes like we gonna make mistakes so allow yourself to make mistakes and don't beat yourself down when you mm -hmm. make a mistake yep you know and, and that's a big thing right so it's a lot of you know, women that got skills but don't know how to monetize it or don't know, don't think they're ready to monetize it. They just doing it on the side. Like, what is that transition like? And, and, and it could be universal or it could be for women, but how can we turn the skill into a business? Yeah, so I, I know when I when I talk, I naturally just say women, 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 but the fellas can definitely, like, I know y'all are in here, so um, anything that I share, hopefully it will be helpful for someone, but one of the things that I love being able to do is um, getting people to have, like, that aha moment where they realize, wait a minute. I can do this too. And so one of the things that I've definitely learned um, and been able to teach over the years is the fact that a lot of times you don't have a money problem, you have a mindset problem. A lot of us were raised to believe that we have to, you know, you got to go to school, you got to get the degree, you have to do this thing in order to be successful, in order to make money. And that's just not true. Like it's 2022, this is the information age. People are willing to pay you for what you know, pay you for what you know how to do, pay you if you can save them some time. Like you can literally go out here and drive your car as an Uber driver, as a, um, um, what's it called? Um, what's the, roadie, right? Running errands. Like you could literally go out here and make the same check that you can make working a nine to five on your own time and on your own terms. Um, and so in terms of being able to turn your skills into a new stream of income, my favorite way to do that, I mean, I'm not getting out here and driving Uber, no shade if you do that, but I don't like driving and I don't like a uh, small talk. And so you got to be able to do both as an Uber driver. So that's not for me. So one of the things that I think is for everybody is the digital product space. And believe it or not, Everybody tuning in right now has something that they could share inside of a digital product. A lot of times, again, it's not a money problem. It's a mindset problem. We're thinking way too deep. We're making it way too hard. And you already got everything you need to get everything you want. And so one of the things that I encourage my work university students to do is like make a list. I live by lists. OK, whenever I'm trying to figure out my next step. Whenever I'm trying to figure out, you know, should I do this or should I do that? I make a list so that I can literally see it in black and white and that can help me get to um, the solution. And so I encourage you to make a list of your skills, like make a list of those things that you know how to do either based on education, based on experience, um, based on, you know, just just like what you know, just naturally. There's something that you know how to do. Like I give this analogy. If we all came together, all 45 of us came together and we sat down at like a long boardroom table and we went around that table. Every single person at the table has something to share that someone else at the table doesn't know. Right. Yeah. And so in uh, 2022, people are willing to pay you for the things that they don't know and for the things that they don't know how to do. And so you can literally take that information that you already have. You don't have to go out and take another class. You don't have to go out and get another, another degree. You don't have to put yourself in debt. 
you can literally use the skills you already have the information that you've been hoarding inside of your head and teach that share that to somebody else and you can do that in the form of a digital product i love digital products because for me entrepreneurship is about freedom so i didn't start this business to be busy okay i know the booked and busy thing is real cool but once you start evolving right once you really start like realizing what's important in life you don't want to be booked and busy you you might want to be booked but you don't want to be busy you want to be i say you want to be purpose driven and profitable that means the things that you are doing there's a purpose behind it you're not just out here doing anything you can to make a dollar so um, digital products allow you to make money like right now while you're here tuned into this you can be selling a course on your website you can be selling an ebook on your website you can be enrolling people into your membership or mentorship you could be making money off your podcast like there are so many opportunities there's endless opportunities right now for you to cash in on the information that you already know so start by making a list i know i said a whole lot but start by making that list no give it to them no no i love it like you better talk to them <laughs> like like they need it like they need it because if people make a lot of excuses and i hate it like in my household we zero excuses Right. And so the biggest thing, what I want people to realize is they be like, well, go ahead. I, 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 I'm not an expert yet. Like you don't have to be an expert to teach. Think about this. Wherever you at, it's always somebody right behind you. Thanks. So you can always talk to that person right behind you. You don't have to be all the way at this top of this mountain trying to talk down. You can still nope. be climbing up it, helping the person right behind you trying to climb up too. Yeah. And once you help them, like you will start helping. The biggest thing you can do is serve. The more yep. people you serve, the bigger impact you have. That's like literally that. that <laughs> what you just said is exactly what I always say. Like you don't have to know everything. You just got to know more than the person who you want to pay you. That's it. The person who you expect to pay you. That's the only person that you need to know more than. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know every piece of the puzzle. You just have to be able to help somebody. And one of the things that I think a lot of people overlook is the fact that you can make buku money teaching people what not to do. So even if you've done something and failed at it, you learned a lesson. And so that lesson that you learned the hard way that cost you time and cost you money, you can literally turn around and sell that lesson to someone else. So don't just think that you have to know how to do it all the right way. Teach people how not to do it the wrong way. Oh, that bar, bar spicy. Hey, 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 buddy said drop the mic of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she, she definitely killed that. Um, so a lot of people are like, okay, well, you saying get into the digital space, but I don't even know how to do that. Well, I don't got the resources to do that. Like, what, what, what would you share with them so they can get started right now on this live to create a digital product? So again, not a money problem, a mindset problem. Okay, even thinking that you don't have what it takes that's your mindset even feeling like you don't have enough information to share that's your mindset thinking that okay if i put this out there nobody's gonna buy it that's your mindset so a lot of times it's not that you don't have the skill set to be successful it's that you don't have the mindset yet to be successful and so a big part of what i teach is you know of course we're talking about making money but it doesn't matter if you make the money if you don't have the mindset to maintain the money so it's so important that you figure out how to really get your mind right so that you can get your money up. The thing that I need for y'all to realize is that we all have access to this same internet, okay? If you have $12.99, you can sign up for a pro account on Canva, okay? Canva.com is where you can create the most affordable, and Canva has a free um, account as well. I just don't like to promote the free account because I don't know the limitations of the free account. So I can only speak on the pro account, but even that's only $12. And if you do it right, you can make that $12 back 10 times, okay, before you got to pay another $12. So you can literally get on Canva.com. They have templates, thousands of templates that you can use to create a checklist, a template, um, an ebook a digital download, a presentation. And one of the things that I teach is how you can literally create content one time and then resize it basically so that you have multiple digital products. So you can put all of your information, like literally do a brain dump. Well, this is the topic that I know how to teach. Let's say you are an accountant, okay? You work for a corporation, you are in their accounting department. You can literally take those ABCs, one, two, threes, those things that are like, 
very elementary, basic information to you and put that in a digital product and teach it, share it, sell it to an entrepreneur, to somebody who's just getting into the space, who cannot afford to necessarily hire their own accountant right now, but they need accounting in their business. One of the things that a lot of people don't think about when you are in like the corporate space, especially is you're working for a big business. Us small business owners, we want to be able to do business like big businesses. So yes. bring those big business skills into the small business entrepreneurial world and teach us the game. I came yes. out, of, out of the classroom. Like, I don't know corporate. I don't know how corporate businesses run. And so if I can hire somebody that can help me run my small business like a big business, I'm willing to pay for that. So take those skills that you use every single day, all day long, and figure out Who's willing to buy this? Think about the clients that you serve at your job. There's another small business or individual out there somewhere who has those same goals as the people that you're serving at your job. If you're in the service-based business, I love talking to my service-based businesses because y'all work way too hard, okay? Y'all are on your feet all day. Y'all are trading time for dollars. And so if you're in, let's say, um, one of my clients, I don't have clients anymore, but one of my past clients, um, braids hair. That's all she does. She braids hair. First of all, you don't need um, a, a license to braid hair. Okay. And when I say home girl is, I'm not going to tell her business, but she's making at least $2,000 a week braiding hair. Okay. At her house. So she's not paying booth rent. She's not, she didn't have to go to school, you know, necessarily to be licensed because you don't have to be licensed to braid hair. And so one of the things that I helped her do was create, um, create digital products that go along with her with her services because she's booked and busy. She literally cannot take any more clients. So now she offers braiding classes where she records a tutorial, puts it online, and people pay her. Moms pay her because there's some mamas out here with these little girls that don't know what they're doing with they with they uh hair. Okay, and they're willing to I'm, that's no shade. I'm just saying that is a need. That's a need, okay? Teach me how I mean I know how to braid, but there's a lot of people out here who don't. So that is definitely a need. And then there's a lot of people who hear me say that you can make $2,000 a week braiding hair. And you're like, wait a minute, I could braid some hair. So why not take a class from the person who's already doing it to teach you how you can do it too? So if you are doing something well, you can teach other people how to do it. Get in where you fit in. Yo, I love that. And another thing, they be like, yo, well, I don't know who to talk to. I don't know how to use social media. I don't know how to get in these social media streets and all of that, right? It's like, uh, what to do? What to do? Who do I talk to? How do I get them my digital product? This is the thing. Again, y'all are going to get sick of me saying this, but mindset. If you are here right now, blink, blink. That means you know how to use social media, okay? So that means you are using an excuse for why you can't monetize social media. This is... I started my first business, y'all, before Instagram. Like, Twitter and Facebook were the only things out. And Facebook was just, like, your mama and your aunties and your friends from college. People weren't even doing business on Facebook. I started my business where I was out here handing out flyers, okay, mm. trying to be my own street team. So when I hear people, like, make excuses about social media, I ain't got no sympathy for you. I have zero yeah. sympathy for you because it's so easy these days to make money these platforms are literally set up for you to be successful with your business so you can create a reel you can create a video you can go live and just talk about the things that you know how to do even if because one of the things that people always say is well i don't have like testimonials you know i'm new to this i've never done it before you are your testimonial if you've been working at a job the results that you've been getting for that company is your testimonial so share with people what you know how to do that's the easiest way for you to make money that's the easiest way for you to get a client that's the easiest way for you to sell a digital product is just to be of service like you said be of service and show people what you are capable of doing i believe in educating so educate your audience on what's possible based on what you've already done and then literally say if you want me to help it help you do it too slide in my dms if you want me to help you do it too hit the link in my bio if you want me to help you do it too drop you know a comment in the comments below and i'll follow up with you so just putting yourself out there and showing the results that you're able to get other people even if it's just based on results that you've gotten for yourself that's the best way for you to use social media, in my opinion. And again, you can be your own testimonial. You don't have to have a client roster of people, 
you know, uh, uh, co-signing you right now. Everybody knows that, you know, we all got to start from somewhere. The other thing that you can take advantage of is TikTok, okay? That's where the real money is at. And TikTok, the thing that I love about TikTok, and I'm not even doing 25% of what, I, what I'm about to be doing on TikTok, but the thing that I love about TikTok aside from what we're doing over here on Instagram, we're always complaining about the algorithm on Instagram. Like you could post something today and nobody will see it until next week. That's just, I don't know. That's just how it works. With um, TikTok, you have a much better chance of being found, even if you don't have hundreds or thousands of followers. So just putting the content out there. So Number one would be create some content where you're educating people, you're serving people, you're answering questions, you're showing yourself as the expert. And then number two would be consistency. Because another thing that I hear all the time is like, well, I posted it and I ain't getting no sales. It's like, and then I go to your page and you posted it one time 27 days ago. What do you think is going to happen? You think you just going to like, no. Instagram, social media makes it easy. The internet makes it easy, but you still got to do some work. You still got to be willing to do some work. And so I believe if you want to create consistent income, you have to have some consistency. You got to have a consistent marketing strategy. And again, it starts with getting right here, you know, not being afraid to get on camera, not being afraid to create content and share what you know, because people aren't going to pay you to do something for them if they don't even know that you've done it for yourself. Exactly. And the big thing I see when they do do that one post and they say it don't work, I go look at their post and there's no value. They just selling. Like mm -hmm. they just selling the person the whole time of the video and they wonder why it don't work. Yep. You got to serve. You got to give. Give value in your content. If you don't give value and all you're doing is asking, ain't nobody going to buy that. You like they boring cousin that's always asking for money. <laughs> you know, so, so we don't want that, right? And so I know it's a lot of mothers that are mothers, wives, entrepreneurs, they do for everybody else. What are some tips that you can give them for them to do for them? And not put them so, you know, God. Yeah, I mean, we hear all the time, you know, like the you can't pour from an empty cup thing. And the thing is like you can, but you're going to end up frustrated. You're going to end up mad at your family. You're going to end up just mad at everybody. The things the things that are truly your blessing will become a burden if you don't take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, and so my biggest tip is what you said, like figuring out what truly makes you happy and spending time, intentional time doing that thing consistently. So not, you know, once a month, once a quarter, whenever you, <laughs> my girl says she's always mad. Listen, because you be yeah, putting other hilarious. people first. Candace, yeah, you show up for everybody, okay? You yeah. show up for everybody. You got to show up for yourself. So I think that success, period, and, and when I say success, I don't just mean in your business. I mean, like, whatever you define success as. For me, freedom. You know, for me, family. So success, happiness, all of those things, it requires a little bit of selfishness. And we were raised to think that being selfish is, like, a sin, you know? But I... I truly live by like the work and the W E R K work. The E in that work is not just cause it's cute. The E is the effort and the energy that you dedicate to your own dreams outside of what you do for other people. That's the work with an O. Okay. All of that stuff you're doing for other people, that's the work with an O. But when you're dedicating time and effort and energy to what you want, that's the work with an E. And I live by that. I stand on that 10 toes down that you have to get a little selfish if you're truly going to be successful. And I don't mean you got to, you know, do it in a shady way, but you got to set some boundaries. And yes. part of those boundaries is you realizing what you need, realizing what your happiness like recipe is, um, how long you can go without doing whatever it is that is truly going to fill you up. Most of us can't go that long. Um, it can't be a one time a year thing where, where you, you know, give yourself a weekend. You know, it can't be that. It literally has to be like a consistent tapping in and checking in um, with yourself and making sure that you are putting yourself first. Even if that goes against everything that you, you know, were taught and how you were raised and all of the things. But we were more than likely raised by people who weren't putting themselves first. And a lot of times we can see the results of that. And so unless you want to you know, repeat those results. You got to be willing to do something different if you want something different. So that would be my best advice would be like, figure out what truly, truly makes you happy and be a little selfish in, in making sure you get it.
I'm 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 gonna give you a, a moment of silence for that one. <laughs> like, you know, like like it's so real, like and and it's necessary, especially for women. Like I love women, I love my wife, I love entrepreneurs, and I know how much um how much y'all have to take on y'all shoulders. Like sometimes like I ain't gonna lie, I be moving and grooving, she gotta watch the kids plus do this side of the business, but I'm I I, I got a little more freedom. I mean, yeah, I, we I know face. I see a face and I'll just be so sad, like what I got to do. I got to do something. I got to make this better. And so I was like, all right, well, this is what I'm going to do. All right, let me, I'm going to go get a full-time nanny so you don't even got to worry about that. All right, yeah. we're going to hire a chef to come cook for us every week so you don't got to worry about that. Yeah. All right? Uh, so, and then cleaning, we got some uh, house service so you don't got to worry about that. Right? Just so you can get some more freedom so you can keep moving and growing and scaling because this empire ain't just built off of us. It's yeah. built off of us. Yep. Like, Facts. Like, so and I there's a book it. too that I want to recommend. Um, it's a game changer. Ladies, y'all got to read it if you haven't already. It's called We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. One of the things I love about this book is not just, I mean, obviously the title, you know, it makes you feel like it's probably all about making money. But one of the chapters in that book, she literally talks about like getting selfish, realizing like that there's nothing wrong with taking care of you. There's nothing wrong with hiring that housekeeper. There's nothing wrong with hiring that nanny, like not looking down on yourself, not judging yourself, um, not feeling like you're less than if you need help, because you could feel like that all day, but you're eventually going to run into a wall. And the people around you who are like literally supposed to be um, your people, you're going to start feeling um, resentful. And nobody wants to live like that. You know, nobody wants to live like that. The name of the book is We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. And Rogers has a D, R-O-D-G-E-R-S. It's a game changer, y'all. So check that one out. I love it, right? And so we all know content is king, right? So can you tell us how content helped your business scale to what it is today? Oh, so again, I started my business back when like this was not the thing, but this is the thing that sustains your business. And the thing about entrepreneurship is you can't be um, you can't be scared to do what's new or else you'll get stuck. Right. You either got to roll with this new thing or you're literally going to get rolled over. And so when I started the Single Wives Club, which was the business, the brand that put me on the map, so to speak. That's, you know, really where I um, created a name for myself was with the Single Wives Club. The content that I created that did it for me was just how I sat here and shared y'all, shared with y'all my story, was telling all my business, talking about my imperfections and the things that I've gone through. That is what did it for me. And I didn't even know what I was doing because again, I don't have a business degree. I came out of the classroom. So I was literally just a newly single woman um, recently engaged out of this abusive relationship, trying to figure out how the heck I even ended up there in the first place and how I could make sure I never ended up there again. And so just me sharing that story as my content, even though I didn't know I was creating content, that is what created that connection with it's women all, you know, this hundred and however many thousand um, people who are here right now, these aren't all new people. There are so many people who have been around since, 2012 you know since the beginning because they know my story and because they could connect with my story and because i've never been the per person to try to pretend like i had it all together like i still will tell y'all when stuff don't work out you know because i think that it's unfair for you to act like it's all together you don't ever have a bad day you ain't never confused you ain't never um you know failed because the next person who's looking to you for inspiration or encouragement they're getting a false sense of what it what it's really like and so yeah. um my content has literally just been me sharing my story not even you know we got to get fancy these days with these reels and all of this stuff but it was just me talking about what i've been through and other people saying wow i've been through that or wow i don't want to go through that so what can i do to keep myself from going through that how can i learn from your lesson like your very expensive lesson so that i don't have to learn that the hard way so um and i still think that that's true right now like creating yes. content that is authentic creating content that is real not trying to pretend like you um are somebody that you're not because if you are pretending you're gonna attract a whole bunch of fake fo fake phony people if you're putting out fake phony content you're gonna attract fake phony people and, and most of the time they ain't gonna spend no money OK, so you want to make sure you're putting out, you know, your true, authentic, transparent self, because 
like we're doing God's work yeah. and there are people that God is going to send you who really need you. And if you're not willing to be the real you, you're not going to be able to serve the people. So yes. that's what I got to say it. About that. Killed it. I tell people all the time, share your story. Because mm -hmm. my teaching style, I teach a style called the raw truth. And I teach you how to be your raw self. How to, how to show the world your raw self because I want them to fall in love with you, not you trying to be somebody else. And yep. then you being truthful when you get on social media and not trying to buy this fake lifestyle to make people like you when they ain't going to like you anyway. Right? They coming around Thanks. you for all of the wrong energy. <laughs> like, you know, and so putting out content that share your story will forever go. And I tell people this all the time, like think about some of your favorite influencers. It's nothing special about them. The only thing is they learned how to put out impactful content and it resonated with you. That's yep. it. That's, That's it. it. You have that same ability, but you scared to use it, right? So if you had $100 to your name right now, right, and you got your phone, your cell phone, and your phone bill is paid for one month, how would you use it to market and scale your business right now? I would get on TikTok. I would get on TikTok every day until that next bill is due every day until that next bill is due because something is going to pop off. Like, again, I believe that I'm doing God's work. So God ain't going to let me get too far. You know, everything ain't going to go smooth, but he's not going to let me hit the flow. I might stumble a little bit, but he's not going to let me hit the flow. But I believe you got to give God something to bless. And so by consistently doing the thing, you're either it's either going to work or you're going to figure out what don't work, right? So all work works. One of my mentor, all, one of my mentors always says, like, all work works. It's either going to teach you, it's going to work out, or it's going to teach you, you know, how to fix it. And so that's what I would do consistently. If you don't understand TikTok, Google. Google is your best friend. YouTube can be your best friend. There are plenty of things that I don't understand right now. These days, I just hire people to do the stuff I don't get. But when I ain't had no money, if I had $100 to my name, if you don't have no money, you better have some time. That's it. A get yourself of... some time and get on YouTube where you can find a tutorial on anything. Like literally you can figure it out. But even speaking the things that you don't know is a limiting belief because you're one click away from figuring it out. Yes. Yes. And we got to break all of those limited beliefs and we got to replace them. Right. Yes. So if you somebody that got a limited belief, I want you to actually go out and find somebody to help you break it and replace it. So you can strive and you can become that person you want to become. Yeah. You know, uh, man, thank you, thank you so much for your time. First of all, and all of these gems. You My like, pleasure. I you hope so somebody dope. had an aha moment. That's all no, I'm here for. They had them. I watched them say it in here. And the ones who didn't say it, they were too frozen. Like, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, well, thank you so much, Queen. I ain't going to take up no more of your time. I'm so grateful. Um, for you, Thank you. people, um, you know, you could have been doing anything in the world, but you right here with us. So I'm beyond grateful. <laughs> Tap in with your girl. We can keep this thing going. Thank you so much for having me. It was great connecting with you. And I love y'all. I appreciate you. All right. Everybody have a blessed night. Um, thank y'all so much for y'all time because y'all stay um, the whole time. And the people that stay long are the ones who really succeed. The ones who fall off are the ones who really fall off in life sometimes, to be honest. So congratulations to y'all. <laughs> All right. We out this thing. Thank you.